everybody! Steve with Steve's Makerspace here, and I built the Blue Angels! Yes, I did! Good news is they are on the workshop for you to download. Bad news is they crash a lot. Just gotta know that going in, okay? So I'm gonna talk about how I built the planes and how to set them up. First, I'm gonna do the setup, and then uh, at the end of the video, I'll talk about the logic gates and the timers that I did for the delay mode. Okay, uh, if you like what you've seen so far, please give me a subscribe. Let's get into it. First, I'm going to recommend that you spawn this into a brand new flat world. And that's because you're going to wind up crashing a bunch of these planes and you're going to have a world that's just littered with planes by the time you're done. Now you want to delete these barrier blocks, especially this one that's colored red. That's the one that's on the bearing. That was an MJM micro bearing. The plane in the center is the master plane and the two on the ends are the servant planes. They're a little too close right now for flying safely so space them apart a little bit more. That one I just moved has a 7 tick delay. Uh, this one has a 14 tick delay so I would suggest putting it on the opposite side of the 7 tick delay so that the three planes are in order of uh, no delay, 7 tick delay, 14 tick delay. Okay, now I'll get in. Number one is the canopy. Number two is pulling in the wheels and turning it into slightly hovering mode. W is for floating up, S is for floating down. I recommend hitting C a bunch of times to zoom out as far as you can. A is to turn left, D is to turn right. Anyway, I'll put all the controls in the download description. You'll notice they're already starting to drift apart from each other. That's just a random factor in the game, there's nothing I can do about it. I did consider putting a Brent Batch stabilizer on the back with a bearing uh, that would swivel, but it wasn't going to look like a real jet in that case. It would look like some sort of weird toy. Here I'm taking off from a flat platform in a terrain world. Uh, I still get quite a bit of drift and also a little bit of lag to boot. An advantage to the terrain world is you can actually see where the fence is, whereas on the flat world there is a fence but you can't see it. I also thought maybe if you started off on a big tower, then you could take off right away and start doing tricks instead of having to hover way up in the air. Quite a bit of drift happens before you even get high enough in the air to do some tricks. Unfortunately, there is an incredible amount of lag with this tower. It nearly crashed my game. But I'll put it on the workshop in case you want to try it. You're still going to want to do some hovering before you try any tricks. I tried doing a barrel roll right off the platform and pretty much fell on the ground. Now I did make the mistake of having the hover up engaged, which means it was pushing me down. You should be in more of a neutral hovering mode before trying to do a barrel roll. I was able to get up off the ground from this though and do a few more tricks. I'm also going to put the tower just by itself up on the workshop. I thought someone might find that useful. There's a button under the wing to open up the hatch to look at all the uh, timers and logic gates. And in case you ever exit without opening the canopy, there's a button on the, uh, under the other wing to open the canopy. It is possible to get the planes going again after they crash, but it's kind of a pain. You have to collect them, put them next to each other, then while having uh, the servant plane on a lift, you get into the master plane and uh, turn it so that it's parallel with the servant plane and then you take the servant plane off the lift. You can't put the master plane on a lift without destroying the uh, control function, but you can put the lift underneath the plane, lift it up, and flip it over. It's kind of a lot of work though, so I would recommend just deleting the planes and starting with new ones. Here I'm showing the function of WASD. I know this is an odd way to do the controls, but I had to do this because I wanted the delay mode, and this is the only way I could figure out how to get the delay mode to work. So I could get a signal going through the logic gates and the timers. Here's how the remote control glitch works. If you're not familiar with it, you put a bearing down, then a piece of wood on top of the bearing. The section you stick the bearing on is the controlling section. I'll stick an MJM microjet on here, put a button over there, hook them up. Now I can delete the block next to the bearing and the remote control is now working. 
and it will continue to work until you exit the world or put the controlling mechanism on a lift. Now here's my explanation for the delay mechanism. I've spread this out quite a bit so it's easier to understand. The white section represents the controlling plane, the blue and the red are the servant planes. The yellow is also a servant plane. I thought I would do four planes, but wound up only doing three. The green represents the delay function. I've got a NOR gate and two AND gates. The button represents a rocket function, and that's going to the two AND gates. The delay switch goes to the NOR gate and the green AND gate. So if the delay is on, that means that the button function goes to the timer on the servant plane. And if the delay button is off, then the rocket function bypasses the timer on the servant plane. The servant plane has an OR gate, so it's getting a signal either straight from the master plane or from the timer. So here's delay mode off, all the rockets going off at the same time. Here the delay mode is on. I've got a seven tick delay between the planes. And there are ten different functions that are on delay. So I've got all these gates and timers repeated ten times over on each plane. And here's some footage of me making one of the connections from the master plane to one of the servant planes. You can see it's quite difficult uh, making sense out of all this mess of spider webbing. You have to go slow and be very careful, otherwise you make a mistake and you don't even know what you did wrong and it takes a long time trying to figure it out and correct it. So that's it. That's how I made the Blue Angels. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Go ahead and give it a try. Hope you have fun with it. All right, that's going to do it for today. If you liked it, give me a like, give me a subscribe, uh, give me some comments. And the download is in the workshop, Blue Angels. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.